Hey guys, Sean C. Phillips here on that brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Taking a go out today, see what things came out today, see what things are on sale. I know today one of the only real big releases that comes out is uh, The Greatest Showman, and I know there's a number of different, you know, retail exclusives of that one that come out today. And I think also The Phantom Thread comes out, and a couple other things are releasing today as well. Also going to try and get to a couple, uh, you know, a thrift store or two today, because I haven't been to any of them in a couple weeks now. Also, the end of this video is going to be a bunch of uh, new DVD and Blu-ray reviews for some things I received to review and talk about for you guys so some really really cool stuff some stuff for 88 films like Alice Sweet Alice so a whole bunch of stuff so definitely stay tuned you know to the end of the video for those reviews but anyway though guys let's get going and see what we can find today. into Target we go and they have a standee over here for The Greatest Showman. And like I mentioned, they have the exclusive edition here, which has a 30 thick six page behind the curtain look at the film with, you know, on set photos and concept art. And it's a digibook edition for that one. So a pretty cool one. It also has on here a $5 e-retail gift card thing on this one. But it's $19.99 for that one, so it's the exact same price for the standard edition Blu-ray. So definitely, if you guys are interested in that one, it's the same exact price. I don't think they have a 4K edition of that one. I believe, though, this one was today, this one, Braven. And I talked about this one a week or so back. I actually like that one. That was actually a pretty cool movie. But it's funny, they put the other new releases on this side of the wall. I've never seen them put the brand new stuff over here. There's a couple other things today that released. Uh, the other one, this is another exclusive, and I think there's exclusives, I think, for this one at uh, Best Buy as well. And maybe even Walmart, I'm not sure. But the Suicide Squad, Hell to Pay one. If you guys have seen this one, you know, let me know how this one is. But this is a exclusive steel book for that one the other one that one's $19.99 so the same price for the steelbook as the standard blu-ray also today um, this one Molly's game came out this one I don't know much about this I know Michael Sears in this movie but I didn't feel that interested in this one but if you guys have seen this though let me know if this one is worth watching also the Phantom Thread which I like the uh, Daniel Day Lewis's which they say is going to be his last film that released today but I know I think sometime next month there's gonna be a 4k edition of that one releasing they I think they originally weren't going to release a 4k and then decided to like later that's why it's not coming out the same day and other than that though uh, proud Mary was today and I saw this one in theaters this one wasn't great or anything I always liked Taraj P Henson though it was sort of like her as like a uh, like kind of taking out bad guys and stuff it was, it was okay nothing amazing and then the other one today was uh, all the money in the world and that was the one you know where Kevin Spacey had to be reshot all of his scenes and stuff because of what happened with him uh, this one was actually pretty decent about this the, this kid who was kidnapped and his you know his grandfather doesn't want to pay the ransom and um, you know it's kind of an interesting one though other than that though that I believe that's all of the major things in here today but it is kind of funny though how they put a bunch of the new releases over on this area which I've never seen them do that before into big lots we go so we'll see if there's anything in here different today I haven't been in here for maybe like a little bit over a month or two but it's been a while this is one of those places though where it can kind of be the same stuff for a long time you know months on end and then all of a sudden they're getting like a new shipment of stuff and change it out most of the uh, DVDs in here, majority of them are five dollars and three dollars, but um, seems to be pretty much a lot of the same stuff again. You know, here's a Blu-ray in here, train wreck for five dollars. That's not a terrible price on that one. Some of these ones though end up at the dollar store when they do the dollar DVDs. Some of those ones because I saw over here, this is a, here's a here's a Blu-ray, Better Call Saul. I think I think I saw this in here last time, but for eight dollars, that's not a bad price for a complete series Blu-ray. They had also a Blu-ray here of a Blacklist that I saw, but it seems to me like most of these ones are the same stuff I've seen in here for a while. It's like I said, they don't, you know, it's usually kind of one of those places where every so often it's the same thing. I know they're releasing too in like a month or two all the Jurassic Park movies on 4K, which is what I might get because I don't, I don't think they're releasing them separately. I think they're only going to be available in a collection as far as I could tell. They have in here like Joyride 3, so it's a lot of times it's stuff that you see quite often. Nothing really too different I can tell. Like, like I said, you know, you see some of these in the dollar store, like they had Robocop 
you know, when they were doing the dollar sale on the Blu-rays, but I never actually saw that one in person, but I know that was one of the ones that they had, but like I said, seems to be pretty much a lot of the same stuff in here. Prometheus, you know, for $5, but nothing really too different today. But that's one of those places, you know, every month or so I like to check it just to see, because you never know. I remember like a couple of months back they had like, and I didn't see it, but I saw people posting pictures like for $5 or something, the complete series of Freaks and Geeks on Blu-ray. So every so often there can be some really interesting stuff in there. But like I said, quite often it's just the same stuff for quite a long time into the valley thrift store we go but fluffy gamer is actually in here yesterday and he posted some pictures in here of like cool world and like one of those limited edition star uh, wars blu-rays that had like the theatrical cut so he kind of combed through here i think yesterday but i haven't been in here in like well over a month or so it's been a it's been quite a while since i've been in here so still wanted to look, look through here there's some stuff down the bottom it's not as full up as it's been in the last like sometimes i come in here it's like overflowing with movies but I always like to check even though he was here yesterday they sometimes put out stuff in here i don't even know what their main days are putting things out so it's kind of random but all the movies in here unless they have a sticker on them are two dollars and I have found decent things here in the past. I think The Parent Trap, they just released that on the Disney um, Movie Club one for like on Blu-ray. At some point I have to join that thing because like they're putting, it seems like Disney lately is putting like everything out that way for the movie club for most of their catalog titles. Like it doesn't seem like there's very much that are coming out like with a, a big release anymore from them of the older titles, at least as far as I can tell. And like I said though, just gonna go and look through all this and see if there's anything in here different today. But it might just be the same old, same old, but we shall see. Yeah, but I pretty much looked through all these and I think Fluffy Gamer really combed through this well yesterday. And it definitely doesn't seem to be too as stocked up. Like I said, there's sometimes when this whole place, I was here like last time, this was all filled under here. There was more movies under here. So this is one of those places where it can really vary with how much stuff they have in here. And you always, and I think I saw two Freeway too. You know, I've always talked about that. And I, I found one on eBay for a decent price a couple months back, but I believe they're gonna be releasing the second one, this one company on Blu-ray coming up. So that's kind of cool. That's finally gonna get like a better release because the picture quality on that DVD was not that great. This is another one I still can't believe hasn't gotten a Blu-ray release yet. This uh, Wes Craven movie, which is really underrated, but always really like this one. But hopefully at some point that gets a Blu-ray release. Yeah, but nothing in there. I picked, you know, looked through everything in there and didn't see anything different. I think Fluffy Gamer, he found the, I think he only found two things in there yesterday. He sent me a picture, but, you know, the Cool World one, that's not really rare, but you don't see that one too often. Into Walmart we go. And in here, though, they have an exclusive edition of uh, The Greatest Showman. And their one has in here like an exclusive songbook in here. It's like a little, it's got like sort of like a slip case on the release as well, like a different kind of slip case. And inside is a songbook, which also includes like, I think it's like two bonus song downloads of some of the songs from the movie. But so I actually like this movie. I'm sure down the line I'm definitely going to get this one. But they also have the exclusive edition too with the songbook in the 4K one here as well. The 4K one is 24 uh, dollars for that and then other than that in here like I mentioned in Target you know they have Proud Mary it doesn't look like they have any exclusive editions of the Suicide Squad animated film here the 4k is you know 24 96 for that they also have all the money in the world here 1996 for the uh, you know the blu-ray or 1796 for the DVD they have Phantom Thread as well as well as Molly's game and I think this might have been today the third season of Outlander and this one also released today, uh, Vice Principles. You know, this is the complete series. They only are releasing season two in this, you know, set here with season one as well. Because, you know, they release season one separately. It's only on DVD as well, but it's only $14.96 for it. So it's pretty much the same price that it would be if you were buying, you know, one the season two on its own. So it's pretty much a pretty decent deal for that. Also released today was Gone Are the Days and Braven, which I mentioned as well in um, 
in Target. And this past weekend, I saw a couple of films. Uh, the first one I saw is the new Wes Anderson uh, stop motion animation film, uh, Isle of Dogs, which is done the same style as Fantastic Mr. Fox. And it's basically set, you know, in a world where there's this massive outbreak with these dogs that got this like flu and sicknesses, and they were all exiled to this trash island in Japan. It's about this kid who crashes down this little plane to try and rescue and find his dog. And then like the humans that are kind of coming after this kid to try and rescue him, but he doesn't want to go back until he finds his dog. And it's him going along with a pack of dogs trying to find his dog through this whole trash island and all the kind of things they come across but really really fun film the other one that I saw was the movie The Quiet Place which is done really well at the box office got a lot of really good reviews and you know did really well and it's, I would say, it's not as much of a horror movie as it is way more of like a super tense suspense film. And it's set with his family all when there was like an, uh, you know, in the apocalyptic times where something had happened and there's something where, like, you know, if you make any sort of noise whatsoever, something will come out and, you know, kill you. And that's essentially what it is. And it's like this family has to, like, adapt and it shows what, they, what they're going through and they have to walk around without any shoes and they can't make any sort of noise. And it's like, like, that's the real tense part is like they have to be super quiet and if anything happens happens and you know these things gonna come whatever these things are I actually really liked it it really like I said though it's not as much horror just way way more of a tense like you know pulse pounding kind of thing that you're really like paranoid about what's gonna happen and there's certain things that are happening when, when you know oh this is not going to be good for this family when this certain event happens and the last one I saw was the film uh, blockers which stars you know John Cena and it was essentially about like these parents that find out about this sex pack that their daughters are having on prom night to lose their virginity and it's it's sort of sort of like a female super bad kind of vibe that's how some of the reviews have compared it it's got that sort of vibe and it's done like you know the, the different because normally it would be like you know a lot of the films in the past that have been the similar kind of concept it's been about guys this one is about girls losing their virginity and having this pact and of course the parents find out about this and you know on prom night and the actual night so they kind of are trailing around with the daughters and kind of stalking them and lurking around trying to do anything they can to stop this pact from happening you know, and it was like kind of like wacky, crazy stuff that happens. I liked it, but I will say it's one of those kind of things where so many comedies these days, if you see the trailer, they show so much stuff. You know what I mean? They ruin so many things. I almost wish with comedy films, I could try and avoid seeing any of the trailers because I, it, there's something about it, it's like certain really funny stuff get given away. You know, you didn't see everything. There still was a lot of stuff that wasn't in the trailer, but it's one of those things though where the trailer kind of shows you everything, but really though was a fun, and I liked, like I said, that it was from a female perspective. It was like a little different with what was happening. But if you guys saw any of these movies, you know, this past weekend, let me know what you guys thought of them or what films you guys saw. Into Best Buy we go. Well, we'll take a look, though, and see what they have in here. And, yeah, they have an exclusive steelbook. I thought they had that today of The Greatest Showman. It's kind of a cool image. It's like an um, like out-of-focus image with the, the characters in the background. Kind of a cool one in here for that that one's $24.99 for that steelbook I believe though the steelbook is only with for the blu-ray version not for the 4k one because sometimes they have a 4k one as well and they also in the front of the store they had an exclusive edition here of uh, Suicide Squad Hell to Pay it was a version that came with like a graphic novel thing I think it's like the graphic novel that the you know this uh, one is based on it was included inside of that one it looked like it was like a dollar more or something like that for that edition other than that in here though they have uh, Brave in here as well for $12.99 uh, $12 so that's a pretty good price for that one and they have Proud Mary in here for $19.99 as well but that seems to be all of the major new ones I, I believe too the Cheech and Chong one released today you know Up in Smoke the 40th anniversary edition that one was today as well that's $9.99 but other than that though that's I'm pretty sure that's all the major things in here today so anyway though guys, that's all for this DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Like I always say, if you guys enjoy these shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Leave me comments below too for letting me know what you guys picked up and also what you guys thought of the titles I reviewed at the end of this video. But now stay tuned for some new DVD and Blu-ray reviews. And the first ones I got here from Arrow Video, just when you guys know these ones are available. Uh, this one here is a spaghetti western double feature of uh, a Pister for Rango and the Return of Rango. And both the ones on here have brand new uh, 2K restorations on both the films, as well as, uh, you know, they have the Italian language versions, as well as the English language soundtracks to both the films. 
I have on here uh, new commentary tracks with Spaghetti Western experts on here. They have on here some featurettes. So a bunch of different new features on here, as well as they have a booklet uh, about the films with some pictures and stuff like that, and facts about the productions of the films. So if you guys are interested, like I said, I want to let you guys know this one is available. The other one here is from Arrow Video. This is from the Arrow Academy line. This is, I believe this is the first film that Sam Neill starred in. And it's a movie here called Sleeping Dogs. This has on here, though, a high-definition transfer on here. It has on here a, uh, a documentary on the film from 2004, talking to the cast and crew, you know, Sam Neill, uh, 1970s uh, making of on the film here. And inside, too, this one has a booklet as well about the film, talking about the production and all that kind of stuff in here. So, like I said, just want you guys to know these ones are available from uh, Arrow Video, and this one is from the Arrow Academy line here. Now, then, this next one here is from uh, Shout Factory from the Scream Factory line. This is one I had never seen before because I had always seen the sequel to this film, you know, the second movie that, you know, starred Angelina Jolie, which I think was her first movie. This is the John Claude Van Damme film called Cyborg. And this is actually a pretty cool movie. It's basically, though, set in the future, and there was like a um, a virus that kind of happened and made like, you know, killed a whole lot of people, and it's kind of like, you know, a post-apocalyptic film. I don't remember if the second one was kind of like that. I, I only saw the second one like years and years back, but this is basically, though, like set in a post-apocalyptic world, and... You know, scientists were working on the cure to try and, you know, cure what's going on in the world with this virus. And it was all kind of stored inside of this woman who is a cyborg, who was like this robot. And there's this leader of the, kind of like set in the wasteland, the leader, who's like this bad guy who's like kind of going after and killing people. He's like really crazy and stuff. And uh, John claude Van Damme's character finds out that this, you know, this robot ends up getting like kidnapped by them and taken in because they're trying to use the cure for themselves. So he kind of has control of it, the bad guy. And it's kind of him trying to rescue her and kind of like, you know, get her back and get her to the scientists and stuff that need her, you know, to get the cure and everything. It's actually a pretty interesting film. Like I said, I had never seen this one before. This was from 1989 but has on here though a brand new 2k scan of the film it has on here uh, interviews with the director and some of the cast on this it has a new feature on here talking about the effects of the film but like this is one like i said never saw this one before really love the new artwork on this one as well but a really pretty fun you know uh, you know uh, science fiction film this is another one. This one I saw years back. I had not seen this movie in a really, really long time. This is from Shout Factory's Shout Select line. It's a movie starring Dan Aykroyd called Dr. Detroit. And this is a movie, this is a really, really ridiculous, fun movie. And it's one you don't hear about as much when it comes to, like, Dan Aykroyd movies. This one was from 1983. This is, like, um, a little bit after he did the movie. I think 1980 was Neighbors, which was one, I think, one of his earliest movies. And I think around that time, then he did, like, Blues brothers but this one was basically though about this guy who was sort of like um he was always borrowing money and um you know i think he was like and he had all these girls he was paying for and stuff he kind of like was trying to like look really popular and look like he had like kind of ba basically would borrow money from this woman to try and make it like he had this really elaborate life and everything but he was just kind of spending the money like crazily and like wasn't able to pay it back and he just kind of was blowing the money and he's going to get basically this woman is like, you know, I need my money back. You need that. You owe me. And the guy like, like crying to the woman going, no, no, it's not me. It's this guy who became my partner, uh, Dr. Detroit. And we were working together and he took all the money and he ran off with the money and he has to find somebody to be Dr. Detroit to kind of put all the blame on. And he ends up finding Dan Aykroyd's character. Who's like this real goofy, like uh, professor at the school. And he sees him one morning when he's jogging and there's like this really goofy jogging scene. They in the opening, theme to the movie too is a song that Devo did exclusively for this film and he print basically ends up trying to talk uh, Dan, um, Dan Aykroyd's character into, you know, saying, you want to have a Hollywood lifestyle and you want to be in show business and you want to do all this. And so he kind of talks him into, you know, because he's got all these girls and everything and saying, you know, you, you, you want to do all this. So he basically wants to kind of put all the blame on him and then he wants to run off and then put, leave all the stuff on Dan Aykroyd who knows nothing about this guy's problems or money issues or anything. And it's pretty much, though, about all this that happens and Dan Aykroyd has to deal with what's going on and he has no clue about all this and it's just a really wacky fun movie has on here though a commentary track on here with the director on here 
It has on here new interviews with um, the director, as well as some featurettes on this one. But this is actually a very fun, over-the-top comedy one. Like I said, had not seen this one in a really long time. And the next one I got here is from Lionsgate. It's a movie here that's uh, directed by and starring Damon Dash. And uh, Kanye West is one of the producers on this one as well. It's a movie called Honor Up. It's a pretty interesting movie. It's like, And it's interesting, too, because it's, like it's, it's set in the world of these gangs and these rival gangs. But it's, what's interesting is Damon Dash's gang is like a, a group of older guys guys who are like 40 something and up because normally if you see like a movie about gangs and stuff it's usually younger guys like in their 20s and like early 30s and everything these are older guys so it's kind of showing guys who have been like in this world for years and years and kind of how like they've kind of survived and how they've gotten through this but it's got all these kind of problems like because Damon Dash's character, you know, sells drugs, and then it's like people kind of coming over and then killing people on his gang, and then like they have like rival problems, and if one if someone does something else, they kind of have to go after them. And it's kind of like all the kind of stuff that's going on in this world, and kind of just trying to survive with what's happening throughout all the kind of issues and everything. Uh, Stacey, Stacey Dash is also in this movie as well, which I didn't even realize they actually are cousins. But this is actually in, in real life, I believe I read that. It's actually, like I said, a pretty interesting movie because it's got a different kind of vibe of these other of these kind of films. This has on here though a commentary track on here with Damon Dash, as well as a trailer gallery on this one. The next one here is from um, Paramount. This is the 4K Ultra HD uh, 40th Anniversary Edition here of Grease, which is you know you know one of those musicals like one of that I, I always think of when I think of like top musicals. I even watched the uh, Grease live, you know, from a couple years back, and I kind of like that one. Um, this is basically, you know, so of course there's John Travolta, Olivia Newton-John, and this is, you know, about their, like, right before, they basically, Olivia Newton-John's character uh, and, the, and John Travolta are, like, dating. This is right before school starts up, and it kind of looks like she's going to be going back to Australia, but it turns out she ends up actually staying in America and going to school, and they end up in school together, and it's kind of when they first were dating, you know, during the summer, you know, John Travolta's character acted really nice, and he had a certain way of being, but once they get to school, and they he had no clue that she was going to be going there. She thought he thought she was going back to Australia. He's a really different guy, the way he's acting, and it's kind of like he's in this kind of group of people. She gets taken into this one group, the Pink Ladies, and it's kind of like all the stuff that's going on in school and them sort of acting differently to each other, each other because of how John Tavolta's character is. But a really, really great musical. Really, really good songs in this movie. And it has on here, though, um, the features are on the Blu-ray disc. And I know some of these ones are new on here, but it has like a Blu-ray sing-along on here. It has deleted and alternate scenes. It has some featurettes on here. Uh, the alternate animated man, uh, alternate version of the animated titles on this one. Because really cool opening titles to the film, if you guys have never seen it. But 4K-wise, though, they did a really, really good job cleaning up this movie. Like the details in this film, though, is super super sharp really really good colors really good contrast levels so if you guys definitely you know are a fan of this film and you have the 4k capacity definitely is a great improvement and also on here too some of the features on this one are new as well the next ones here are all from 88 Films, and this is a movie that, you know, I've always been a fan of this film. When I heard they were releasing this on Blu-ray, I was really excited, because this is one of those movies you don't hear about as much as some other films, and I think this is absolutely an amazing movie. Like, when I was watching this again, you know, I was just thinking of how cool this film is and how it's like a shame you don't hear about it more. And it's a movie here called Alice Sweet Alice, which, like I said, I've always loved this movie. This has on here, though, a brand new 2K restoration of the movie. They have a thing on here too showing how they restored it and kind of like what the state of the film was before they restored it you saw like the scratches and everything and how they cleaned it up and boosted the color and everything they did an amazing job though cleaning up this movie but if you guys have not seen the film, it's basically about these two sisters, and the one sister played by um, Brooke Shields is going to her first communion, but like right, right when she's there though, someone kills her at the First Communion at the church and the sister Alice is missing who's the older sister and she's missing and like they end up you know people there are starting to think that maybe she was involved in this and her aunt is like saying you did it Alice and like blaming her and like looking at her really weird and everything and of course so Alice's parents are like no she didn't do it why would you say that why are you acting like that why are like the cops coming around and asking her all these questions but there's some weird things about how Alice is acting and she's always wearing this really weird mask and everything so there's a lot of things 
are kind of pointing to that it could be Alice because, you know, of how she acts around her sister and kind of the arguments that they have and everything. The thing about that's cool about this movie is it's got like a very much like a Dario Argento kind of feel to this about the killer because like the killer's wearing this, you know, cause that's why everyone thought it was too. It was Alice because the killer's always wearing this mask and raincoat. So like, the you know, the person, the audience watching as well never really knows until the end, you know, who is the killer. It's if it's the sister or who it could be. But it is an amazing, amazing movie. Love the music. But like I said, it's got a Dario Argento kind of feel to the film with the way that it goes. Very much like Argento's films around the same time, as well as the music is amazing in this movie. I love the character too, who plays like the head of the, um, the apartment they're in, like the money guy. He's like this really heavy guy, but he was amazing in this movie. This movie, I cannot tell you how good this movie is. This is one of those movies after you watch it, you're thinking about it and thinking about it. It's a shame too, the actress that played Alice. You know, I don't know wh where she went. I think she's kind of vanished because like she was in this movie and a movie called Liquid Sky, and that was it. I, I always wonder like you know what she did after this movie and stuff I don't know this movie though to me is just such a great movie if you guys have never seen this one the thing that's pretty cool too this release is also uh, all region release so you guys can watch this one it's a region free release you guys can watch this one in America on a regular blu-ray player no region free player needed or anything like that or all region player re you know needed for this one and it also has on there a commentary track with um, the director on this one but you know definitely would highly recommend you guys uh, check this one out this movie too also had a couple different release titles it had like one called the communion and then holy terror and they were releasing it as brooke, brooke shields became popular and some of our other bigger movies were released at the time like blue lagoon and stuff uh the next one here this one is a region b release so this one is region locked but so you guys have to have a, a region free player for this one or you know our, all region player for this it's a movie here called offerings and this was kind of um I can't remember what year this was this released originally, but this movie kind of has a feel of Halloween, kind of like a Halloween kind of vibe film, because it's about this kid in the beginning of the movie that's getting picked on by everybody, and he like falls, you know, he's like standing around this well, and he's like acting like he's going to jump in, and this one kid pushes him into the well, and he's like this kid that gets like really badly picked on, and it's years later, and it's pretty much like about like the guy that falls on the well, but like you find out like right afterwards he didn't die. This is years later, and it's kind of like a weird revenge thing about like these other these kids that were involved in the guy falling down the well. You know, they're kind of coming, you know, getting like dying off and everything. And like I said, it's got the way the movie flows and everything. It's got a real Halloween vibe. And the girls in this one are real like valley girls. So they're all like talking like, well, I don't know, but maybe. I don't know. It's like really, really, really valley girlish. The way these actresses are acting in this movie. Like it's like something straight out of Valley Girl. But it has on here though a brand new 2K restoration of the film because the movie was, um, I believe it was shot on 16 millimeter. So it's from the original 16 millimeter negative on this one. It has on here a commentary track with the, the uh, you know, the group called the Hysteria, Hysteria Continues. And they always do like commentary tracks on like cult horror films. I always really love their stuff. They, they've been on some of the Vinegar Syndrome releases in the past as well. But this has on here though um, reversible artwork to the movie. And I believe it's, it's the same image but it just doesn't have the rating symbol on it. But on Alice Sweet Alice though I should mention too that has um, reversible artwork as well though. That has the other cover for the movie The Holy... Uh, the Holy uh, Terror uh, release title for that one. And I always love, too, the red cases that Arrow, I mean, that uh, 88 Films uses on their releases. The next one here is from 88 Films as well. This is a movie that I remember seeing this one years back, and it's Phyllis Diller's in this movie. It's a movie called uh, The Bone Yard. And this has on here, though, a brand new uh, HD restoration of the film, it has commentary tracks on here, interview with actress Phyllis Diller, interview on here with the director, uh, The Bone Yard uh, theatrical trailer. And I switched this one to this image. But the, uh, the original image on this one is uh, the Boneyard, and this is this image. I always like this dog image. I remember the original DVD that came out years back had that image. This one, though, as well as a Region B release. But this one is basically, though, about, like, at this, like, city morgue. There's, like, um, 
all these kind of weird things are happening to people there. And this woman who comes in who's like a psychic and kind of comes to the morgue to try and see if she can figure out what's going on there. And they kind of bring her out of retirement to go here. It's a very, very strange, wacky movie. But they bring her in there and it deals with kind of like these kids coming back from the dead that are like attacking people in there. It's got like a real evil dead kind of vibe to this movie. It's actually a very, very fun movie. And then the last one from 88 Films, I want to let you guys know this one is available. This is a movie here called The uh, Super In Frame here. And this one has the uh, is restored uh, HD master of this one. It has the um, original aspect uh, ratio on this one. It has the Chinese audio track. It has English subtitles. And it also has a um, reversible sleeve on this one. So it's a different image underneath for the film, for the poster, as well as there's a bunch of different stuff inside here. They have a booklet in here that has uh, some facts and stuff about the film, as well as some pictures and stuff like that in this one. And then the reversible image, though, this one is the same image that's on the uh, slip cover here. But some really, really cool releases here, though, from 88 Films. Really love the stuff that they're putting out, and, you know, can't wait to see, too, what some of their future titles are coming out. Oh, yeah, and this one, too. This one is a Region B release as well, though, so keep that in mind. The only one of that bunch that was Region Free, though, was the Alice Sweet Alice. And the next one here from E1 and Momentum Pictures here is a movie starring uh, Nicolas Cage and Robin Tunney called Looking Glass. And this movie, I really got into this movie. And when I was watching this, I'm thinking, this movie kind of has like a, sl a slight like Twin Peaks feel to this a little bit. And I looked it up, and the director actually directed some episodes of the original Twin Peaks series. He also directed River's Edge, which is like a movie I always really love that movie. It's a really underrated movie with Keanu Reeves and Crispin Glover. This movie, like I said, is called Looking Glass. It's about you know Nicolas Cage and his wife, this character, who end up buying this like kind of sort of older motel out in the middle of nowhere because like Nicolas Cage was basically just a handyman, but something happened to their kid that you know passed away, and they kind of need a change. They need to go and do something really different. So they go out there and try and kind of like forget about what and try and kind of get past the terrible thing that happened to their kid and sort of try and start over. And they go out there, though, and the second they're there, though, there's all these, like, they're trying to do this, and Nicholas Cage's character doesn't really know what he's doing. The owner kind of vanished. He kind of called, you know, he wasn't even there when he went to, you know, pick up the keys of the hotel. He put them underneath the mat, and then he calls and says, like, you know, oh, yeah, does everything seem all right? Oh, so how's it seem, Nick? You know, how's it seem? Does it seem okay? And then he, like, basically just vanishes, and he doesn't know how to contact his owner that he bought the place from or anything. And, like, the second he's there, though, he's trying to figure out what's going on has no way to call this owner. He didn't give him a number or anything. And um, this cop starts coming around and asking questions about the owner and says, like, if you know where he is, if you if you hear from him, please let me know. I need to talk to him. So he's acting really weird. And then, like, it's, it's basically, though, about Nicolas Cage, though, seeing the weird people that come into this hotel while he's there. And then the, it's just, like, a bunch of weird stuff. And he discovers this room in the, um, like, the maintenance room. It leads to a mirror that he can like, like spy on people through this one room. So he sort of starts watching this, and it's sort of like um, you know watching people through the room. It's kind of about like these things that had happened there in the past in this hotel, and then the weird things he starts to experience here. I don't want to ruin too much about what happens, but I honestly really got into this one. And Nicolas Cage, though, did a really good job in this movie. It wasn't like, you know, sometimes when you think of Nicolas Cage movies, there can be like really over the top, kind of out there, wacky performances and things like that. This one, though, I thought he was really subdued. I really like Robin Tunney, you know, who is from, you know, The Craft and from like Empire Records and a bunch of different movies. But I thought they were both really good in this movie. Really interesting film. It has on here, though, a behind the scenes on here with the cast and crew on this one. Uh, the next one here is from E1 and Momentum Pictures as well. It's a movie starring Daniel Radcliffe called uh, Beast of Burden. And this is a movie, it's basically all set with him flying this plane. And it cuts back to like what led him to be on this plane and everything. And he's kind of taught, it's flying in this really late at night, really kind of cloudy and like hard to see and everything. And he's like getting like calls on the radio and this guy saying, you're going to make the drop here. And you know, and then he's like, okay, okay. Then other people are calling him and it's kind of him talking to like the DEA because he's like, it's, it's like, he's going to like, 
kind of like um, put the blame on, and like get these group of these guys that he's been working for, get, a, get them arrested for these drugs that he, he his, his, you know, Daniel Radcliffe's character has to fly in and fly out for them. But he's been like basically picked up by the DEA and they're talking to him over the radio saying, well, you're going to do this and make sure you go and do this. But then he's getting these calls over the radio from them saying the guys that he's bringing the drugs to, he's like, well, you know, you, you we're changing the drop and you need to change this location. And it's, it sort of deals with all these kind of problems and it cuts back to like what led him here and then he's like you know can you find this out earlier on in the movie that he has to do this because if he helps the DEA that he's going to get this money for his girlfriend who needs this surgery that he couldn't afford otherwise and he's going to get protection from them and go into like the witness protection program but then like the people that he's flying to they they start to get wind of it and it's kind of like what ends up happening but it's one of those movies kind of like um lock where it's you know like I said it's all set in one location with him, you know, doing this flight, but actually a pretty interesting movie here, and always, you know, a fan of Daniel Radcliffe. The next one here, uh, the director sent over a copy of this one, and you guys can find out about this movie on uh, PartyNightMovie.com. So I'll put a link below for this one. But it's a movie; it's a slasher film. It's basically like a throwback 80s slasher film about like uh, these kids on prom night. You know, they they're leaving the prom, you know, you know, early, and they're like, let's go back to this house and party and everything. And you see right in the beginning of this movie, someone gets killed, this girl gets killed. So, of course, they go to this house, and this killer now is stalking the house that they're at where they're having this party. So you see, like, the person, like, lurking around outside. And it's pretty much, though, about them in the house, you know, getting killed off uh, by this guy. So there's some really pretty crazy deaths in this one. They did a really good job on, like, the, the, the death scenes in this one and, you know, the people who are getting, like, attacked and everything. But it's essentially, it's like I said, it's just a throwback slasher film with all these kids, you know, who are partying on, you know, an after-prom party that they're having. And then, you know, pretty much trying to survive and stuff while this killer is in the house and kind of lurking around and everything. And the killer, too, has a really interesting look with, like, the way they have him looking in this one. And this one here, I'll put a link as well for this one, this film's website. It's from a company called uh, Zelko Productions. It's a movie called uh, Dark Forest. And this was about a group of these girls who are planning, like, a trip to go out to the woods. And the one friend was kind of taking a camera along, too. It's not all, it's not done found footage, though, but she's, like, out there kind of documenting the whole thing because wants to film it to put it up online but um it doesn't go right really well right away because like the one girl that they're gonna bring they go to her house to bring her and she's got this like really crazy abusive boyfriend he's like you're not going out there you're not going with them and she starts yelling and then they get in a fight and you know they run off and the girlfriend stays behind you know the girl stays behind but then the girls like leave and go to the one's house getting ready to, to leave the next morning and then this girl shows up it's essentially though about them going out into the woods and it's this other group of people as, as well out in the woods and you know that this boyfriend that you know found out this girl that did go is kind of nuts and it's kind of like the results of what ends up happening you know out there to these girls because of this guy you know he goes after them or that maybe that's what's going on and it's like a crazy slasher film about what's going on out there i thought this was actually a pretty cool movie it has on here though uh the original cut of the film as well as a theatrical cut it has um eight different commentary tracks on here so a whole bunch of different features as well as behind the scenes and the uh, trailers and tv spots on this one but anyway though guys that's all for the review board for this video thanks again for watching and subscribing i'll see you guys later bye